Hello, welcome to Pete's Plastic Playground on this uh, this uh, Sunday afternoon. It is here. It's um, we're into getting into week three now into January, so Christmas is a distant memory for us all now. Um, just thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, to check in, say hello, and give you a little update on what's what out um, out here at my workbench at the moment. Um, I've started another kit. I've started another build. Um, couple within the last couple of years, I found this. Um, this has been in my stash, and um, I, uh, I obtained it via the Facebook Marketplace. So um, I saw it advertised on there, locally, for a tenner. And uh, anyway, one, one Friday evening, I drove up into the countryside in South Oxfordshire and found this house where this lady lived. And um, yeah, she was selling it because um, it was a gift that one of her kids had been given, and uh, he wasn't remotely interested in it. And uh, so she was letting it go for tenner. So I wrestled with my conscience for about a nanosecond and handed over the money and brought it back with me. Um, so I've pulled it from the stash with um, the intention of uh, building the um, the variant with the nice, attractive red tail fin. I think it's number 57 Squadron from East Kirkby in Lincolnshire from July 44. Um, it's the first time I've ever built the, um, the, the the newly tooled, I think it, if I could say newly tooled, I think it's been newly tooled for about um, eight or ten years now, but um, it's gone together really well so far. I'm at the joining up stage, and uh, the uh, I'll just give you a little glimpse at the interior work in the cockpit there. So um, it's all gone in quite nicely. I like the little decals of the maps on the uh, navigator's table, and the wireless operator's table is all done. So, um, so yeah, nice, nice model. Really enjoying doing it. Sorry, it's a bit dark in here, isn't it? I should do something about the light. I wonder if I can. Let's just try. No, I can't adjust the setting, but never mind. Um, but yeah, so I'm at the at the ready to join up stage, which um, which I'll probably do later on tonight anyway, and uh, make some more progress on it during the uh, during the week. Um, so that's the uh, <clears throat> that's the Lancaster build underway. It's um, the, I wasn't sure about the windows. Um, I've been doing some reading up. It's got windows all along the uh, side of the fuselage here, and um, it seems that uh, later variants of uh, of the Lancaster have the windows painted over. So that's exactly the um, the policy I'm going to adopt. I'm going to paint them over, which it seems to be the case with the instructions. So. Uh, so there we are. I quite like the um, another little look at the inside there with that uh, that little seat and um, some little decal with some, uh, some dials on the on the inside of the fuselage. Yeah, it's a nice bit of detail in there. I really like this. I'm looking forward to having it done. I shall um, mount it on a on a little plinth and um, probably pull this. Um, I've got this. RAF bomber resupply set in my stash, so I shall build um, some bits and pieces out of that and pose it in a little diorama base on a on a sort of photo frame with some uh, some tarmac on it or something like that. So that's the current project. Um, now I'm just going to put the uh, put the lank to one side for now because. Um, down on the floor out of the way because it's that happy time of year. Um, Airfix Model World came through the post the other day and I uh, haven't really had a look at it yet. I'm going to go to bed early tonight and have a read but um, there's quite a lot in there. Um, there's, uh, I think there's a, a build on the new Airfix Sherman and uh, a couple of um, Hawker Tempests as well. There's a, um, a 172 and a one. No, 132 and a 148, I think. Anyway, there's there's two tempests in there this time, which is quite interesting, and a large scale um, large scale Lancaster, 148 Lancaster to read through as well. So that's interesting. So Airfix Model World has come, but more importantly, I had a walk down to my local model shop, and I'll give a little shout out to um, Howard at the uh, Berkshire Dolls House. Um, and uh, a model shop in uh, 
in Twyford, Berkshire, Walgrove Road, Twyford, Berkshire. Um, he kindly gave me, as a gift, the new Airfix catalogue. I always like having the new Airfix catalogue. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things that I've enjoyed all my life. Just to, um, you know, just to look at all the artwork in there and... Uh, we um we obviously know what's in there now because the the big airfix announcement was made last Monday and that's all been covered uh, covered covered off really well on YouTube by lots of other people. Um, so all of those new announcements are featured in the uh, in the catalogue. So um, I thought you might like to have a little look through the new catalogue with me. So uh, that's uh, that's what we'll do now. Hey, so here it is. It's landed on my workbench. The um, 2022 airfix catalogue um always a happy time of year for me because i love to go to bed early and have a little read in the catalogue and enjoy all the artwork and uh and the, the little descriptions of the kits that um that are included in so here we are um this one came from um the berkshire doll's house and model shop in uh, walgrave road twyford and uh, very kindly given to me by the proprietor howard phillips um so uh nice picture on the front of the new spitfire that's coming out in 124 scale it looks great with the old invasion stripes on it and um, it's really nice to have a new super kit um in you know 124 scale spitfire as a super kit with all the immense detail that we've all seen so turning the page there's a few intro pages uh, welcome to the catalogue and the contents descriptions of what's uh, what's on the box um, the, the information you get on the outside of the box how to connect with airfix through social media youtube um, the airfix club which i'm a proud member and i must renew my membership this month uh, club kit this year is the hawk which um okay fair enough the hawk it is quite it looks quite good in black but mm, yeah, doesn't really uh, float my boat too much um, some details of aerodrome and workbench which are interesting little features of uh, the airfix offer on online some interesting reading on their web page and social media pages and so on quick build never actually done one myself um, I might get one for my lad to do this is the sort of um, the, uh, the Lego equivalent if you like so uh, there's some quite nice subjects there's some exciting cars which hopefully will hook in some uh, some youngst youngsters who um, like those subjects, quick four-wheel drive things, and uh, lovely old 65 Mustang, or 1968 Mustang actually, and then the uh, the new watered-down Mustang, pickup trucks, and Audis, and lots and lots of supercars they've brought in as well. All the things that, have, that appeal to uh, to youngsters, hopefully. Uh, uh, Volkswagen camper and a Beetle, a couple of chalies. Very nice. You might have to have a go at one one day actually, see what exactly what they're like. I think there's about 70 pieces in each kit, depending on which one you get. The Mustangs. So you can see Airfix is um, kind of hope that uh, kids will then naturally progress from the uh, quick fill kits onto the real thing, which um, which they've done a lot of work on with their starter kits again hopefully to encourage youngsters into the hobby and i know um my local model shop um howard has been suggesting having a, a sort of workshop on a saturday morning so that um kids can come in and uh and build a kit and they can be given some uh, some help on guidance and what to do so these two new starter sets the bugatti chiron and what on earth a Paga, Pagani Huaria is, I don't know, is that a Chinese supercar, I don't know, Japanese supercar, pretty smart looking, cars aren't really my thing, um, when I think of cars I think of going to work, but, um, um, a new starter kit of a newly tooled Jaguar E-Type, which is really cool, my father-in-law is a bit of a petrol head, he might enjoy building that one day, uh, the Mary Rose, it's always around isn't it, and then these uh, fairly basic simple starter kits, the Spitfire and the Red Arrows Hawk, I just, it's a clever idea, have the, um, the shadow, the big aircraft in, in the shape of the stand, that's really good, 
um, the new tanks, the uh, Tiger and the Sherman. I've got, I've got both of those actually in a, in a double set. And I uh, haven't had a look at them yet, but I shall do. Concord's last flight. Okay. I saw that in, uh, in the model shop. I was surprised to see that it was over 30 quid, which considering it hasn't even got any windows, I don't think it's um, a bit steep. And I'm always a bit put off airliners by the bloody fiddly decals as well. But um, anyway, there it is for fans of Concord. That's a nice dogfight double set. It's really good. Very nice. But just look at all these illustrations. They are so evocative, aren't they? Look at that one. <laughs> Fantastic. That's apparently really good. I've never built it, but that's supposed to be very, very good. The, uh, the Willys Jeep. So I'm just having a quick flip through. That's a great bit of artwork for that typhoon. I built that sinking helicopter and um, had a devil's own job with the yellow paint. I should have painted it white first before I put the yellow on, but anyway, I st struggled with the yellow and it came out okay in the end. And um, then it fell off the shelf and had an accident and uh, had to bin it, unfortunately. But I've got another one of the um, the newer variant Sea Kings, the um, the Commando one with the green, green the sort of winter camo stripes on. More cars. And a couple of gift sets here. I've, do, I've done done the ME109 out of this one. I think the uh, the rest of it's down in the stash. Oh yeah, that's the one I've got. The classic conflicts. These uh, these job fight double sets are pretty good. Again, great artwork. I mean, look at that Mustang in 262. It's fantastic. And uh, some assault gift sets. Oh, assault gift set with the typhoon. Is it the typhoon in that one? Yes, it is. Three Titanics in varying sizes. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Seems a bit strange to have three of the same product when uh, there are so many missions lately. But, uh. So here we go into the military aircraft. So they're, they're set out in scale. So we start off with 172 scale. And a uh, few old firm favourites in there. I brought Defiant back in that. A new variant of the Wildcat coming out. I've done a couple of these. I really enjoy doing the undercarriage. The um, the way they the way they represented that in the kit is absolutely brilliant. I really enjoy putting that bit together. New variant of an ME one uh, ME one hundred and nine or BF one hundred and nine, is it? Is. And then this new Tempest that's coming out in one seventy two. So yeah, uh, I don't know much about the Hawker Tempest. Um, it's similar in appearance to a Typhoon, but apparently a vastly different aircraft. Uh, I must have a little learn about the Tempest and the differences. Some more 172s with some uh, mistake stuff in there. They brought that um, Mark IV Lenin back, which I think is a good move. Very nice model. And I wouldn't mind a crack at that as well, the old Gloucester Meteor. It's an interesting subject. Some nice colour schemes there for it as well. Very nice indeed. And uh, the newer stuff that they brought in the, uh, the new Mozzie and the Beaufort are there. Sea Harrier coming back for the Falklands 40th. I would have thought they'd have made more of a thing about the 40th anniversary of the Falklands War. Perhaps a gift set or something. But um, and the swordfish is in in a in a couple of new guises to celebrate the um, 80th year of the, 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 the channel dash. I'm, I'm in the middle of a swordfish at the moment, and uh, I must I must um, I put it down because I was getting fed up with the ringing rigging in the wings. But uh, when I'm in the mood, I'll get back back on. Um, little Glen in there, got the Harriers. I think the, it says they're going to have new pack illustrations. Oh, that's the other helicopter, the other Sea King that I've got in my stash. I haven't got that one. I've got the HC4 with the extended fuselage. Um, 
Tough little Nati Tex here, B17. That's the one my, my lad got me for Christmas, bless him. And uh, the resupply set is still there. And they've brought that um, Skytrain back in as well. That's a lovely model. Mountains, Mitchells, Buccaneers. There's some lovely models. Look at that page of models. There's nothing that you wouldn't want on that page, is there? Absolutely stunning. I really fancy doing that Buccaneer. I've got the Navy one in this stash. There's the length that I'm doing now, look, the V3. It's nice to have that. Wow. There's something, isn't it? The three V bombers in the range all together for the first time. What a fantastic set. Imagine if they put them all in one box. <laughs> How much would that be? 200 quid? Imagine if they made a big V bomber gift set with all the paints and so on and so forth. I know you wouldn't really use the paint, but uh, it would be uh, be quite a thing, wouldn't it? But um, I don't know. Am I alone in thinking that um, these models deserved a bit more um, of an exciting setting to be photographed in than just in the, uh, just in the car park? It just looks like um, you know, some sort of pavement somewhere, but uh, I would have thought they'd have done something a bit nicer for those. But there they are. So the... The Valiant, the Victor, and the Vulcan, all in the all in the same range, in the catalogue at once. That's really good. So here we are into 148 then with the Tiger Moth and the Chipmunk and so on. And uh, some of these have been in for a fair while now, haven't they? The 148 Muzzies, I think, are brilliant. Really nice models. There's a, a new scheme there. And they've um, reintroduced the Mark 12 Spitfire as well. There's enough Spitfires about at the moment. Sabre. The Meteor Hunter. There's no shortage of classic, um, classic jets around at the moment. Now look at that. <laughs> wow. What a surprise that was to see that they've um, introduced this brand new 148 scale Avro Anson. I've, I've had a quick read on it. I'm going to have a proper read on it tonight. But um, it seems that there are um, some options on how to build it, how, which variant of kit you want to build, of, of, of Anson you want to build. Look at the detailing there of the, um, you know, the fuselage framing and so on. That's a lovely, lovely model. That's going to be very, very popular indeed. Look forward to seeing one of those being built. And also a 148 Buccaneer. And, you know, fair play to Airfix. There were an awful lot of people on social media asking for 148 Buccaneer. And they've come up with the goods. A magnificent looking aircraft. And I think they've, um, they've done it proud. And, uh, you know, supplying an array of different weapons. So, um, so yeah, 148 Blackburn Buccaneer. Um... The Lynx helicopter. Um, I've got one in my stash. I, <laughs> I, I, I will build it one day, and when I, I, I want to build it to a sufficiently good standard to be able to give it to a gift to somebody I know that um, that flew the Lynx. So it will really have to be Bob on in terms of accuracy <laughs> because he'll know for sure if there's any mistakes. So um, yeah, very versatile helicopter. I've seen pictures of them with the, uh, the door open and whacking great big machine guns sticking out the side. Brilliant. Uh, Javelin's still in. Um, I don't know if that's actually hit the shelves yet or not, but uh, since they announced it was coming back. There it is, that new 124 Mark IX Spitfire. That is gorgeous. Four different variants. Um, if I ever get to do one, I think I'll do the, uh, the, 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 the post D Day option. Just look at the detail in this um, this wing construction and the fuselage and the cockpit. Absolutely stunning. It'd be real good fun to build, I would imagine. That is a lovely, lovely, lovely kit. But I notice that apart from the um, one other 124 aircraft kit that's later on in the catalogue, it's the only one. So the Typhoons are gone. 
and the Hellcat's gone. So the Hellcat actually wasn't around in the range for very long at all, I don't think. A couple of years tops. So the Spitfire is the only only 124 um, aircraft now. And we are in the mil 135 scale military vehicles. That stug looks really nice. And I think there'll be a fair bit of demand for that 135 ambulance when it comes out as well, that Austin Pong 2. Impressive range of 135 armour. I forget the manufacturer that they've um, taken the tooling from, but um, certainly there's something for everybody in this range at the moment, isn't there? I've got that one in my stash for Cromwell. And uh, come the great day when I build it. And then there's a strong representation of 176 still as well. The Higgins LCD piece comes back. We've seen the Sherman and the Tiger one already. And the Bedford truck. Here we go. Airfix Classics. Vintage Classics. What a great... Yeah, that was a good move to bring these out. I'd like it if they'd... Um, I mean, it's great that they do it, but it'd be really nice if they could do them in bags again with a stapled over cardboard header. That would be really cool. I'd love to buy a kit like that again. I think that's got to be in my top five of all time Airfix artworks. That's absolutely brilliant. It's all happening there, isn't it? Good to see the old whirlwind back in as well. It's nice. And that de Havilland Beaver. I saw one of these um, flying. I went past Middle Wallop a few months ago and it was um, doing some circuits and it came into land. So that's quite interesting to see. Uh, Trident, Heracles, Concorde again. But here it is, the 124 Harrier GR1. So that's the only other 124 scale kit. And I believe it's 100 quid. So for a fairly old model, it's quite a lot of money, but um, I'm sure, you know, it's the only one out there, I think, the only 124 Harrier going. Um, more vintage classics armour, which is more or less the same as um, last year. I don't think there's anything new. Oh, maybe the, the Chiha Japanese tank. I actually took the trouble to build that a little while ago, the Bofors Gumming Tractor, and these are great little kits. And the half track as well, I built that. So really nice. Sheeps. So for the Falklands, we've got Devonshire and Fearless back in. Um, I don't think Fearless comes with junglies anymore, with the helicopters. I think it just comes with a landing craft. Not sure. Um, I'm still halfway through. Well, I'm three quarters of the way through my Fearless, but I had to put it down. I, I don't know, I just struggle with ships for some reason. There's so many fiddly little bits on them. HMS Devonshire is a nice model. All sailing ships, the cars, the Bentleys in. Fantastic figures. We've reintroduced the Russian infantry and the Japanese infantry. I think that's to go with two reintroduced tanks. I mean, how old are these? I mean, they're crikey, are they personnel? I remember these when I was a kid in the 60s. strategy but war gaming games I don't know if um, they prove to be particularly popular or not I don't know and then it's um, the rest of the catalogue is um, what they call the technical index so uh, in-depth information about um, the models that we've already seen in the catalogue the sizes and so on and uh, how many pieces there are and the skill level which is you know, laudable that they put that information in few credits to various aircraft manufacturers. Then it's the Humbrol section, um, which I'll just, if you like this, I'll just gloss over it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the usual range of paints, nothing new in there, nothing exciting, and I think most of us tend to steer away from Humbrol. The dropper bottles, I tried the Humbrol dropper bottle, I didn't like it, I didn't think the paint was very good. Um, the washes and so on, it's all there. And some paint on brush sets a 
and all the other potions and varnishes and so on brush sets I, I actually to be fair I find the Humber old brushes to be quite reasonably good and the clay station hugely overpriced cutting mats and to finish it all off a few trees so there it is folks the uh, the 2022 Airfix catalogue for your pleasure right so that's it from Pete's Plastic Playground um, I'll say cheerio for now and uh, see you next time okay bye for now